going on, gents? It's RPM here, reporting from Mobile Command. Gentlemen, I was watching an Aaron Clary podcast. As a matter of fact, it was the one he did about the dead fat girl. <laughs> that podcast was fucking hilarious. <laughs> but I want to focus in on a particular super chat that came in, which I actually looked up and I found this article. Oh, yeah, gentlemen. Oh, yeah. See, I made a video a long time ago called The Fragile Balance, where I talked about how it is the blue collar skilled tradesman that is the true backbone to this nation. And how if just enough of one of said skilled trades were to fall off, that would completely destroy the balance. And yeah, society would start to crumble. Gentlemen, this article right here is proof of said video that I made. Now, this article was published on the 5th of January. It's quite lengthy, so I'm going to have to chop it down to size. America needs carpenters and plumbers. Well, well, well. <laughs> oh, yes, gentlemen. We are seeing society collapse. Now, let me go ahead and actually amend that particular phrase. It's not just carpenters and plumbers that America needs. America needs a shit ton of skilled blue collar workers and tradesmen across the board. Try telling that to Gen Z. Now, let me go ahead and fix that. Try telling that to Gen Z men. Justin Wanjalulu, 20, loves to build stuff. These days, as a carpentry apprentice, he installs drywall in houses with the rest of his construction crew. But he said he likes concrete the best. Quote, unquote, at the end of the day, you see how you poured everything. You see the result of your hard work, he said. Now that right there is something that the overwhelming majority of the younger generation has not been pushed toward. Wanjalulu dreamed of becoming a carpenter or an electrician as a child, and he's now fulfilling that dream but that also makes him an exception to the rule. While Gen Z, often described as people born between 1997 and 2012, is on track to become the most educated generation, fewer young men are opting for traditionally hands-on jobs in the skilled trade and technical industry. One must ask why. I'm going to get into that later. Gen Z interest in trades and skilled work has dropped. Uh, yeah, yeah, we know this. The number of young men seeking technical jobs like plumbing, building, and electrical work has dropped by 49% in 2022 compared to 2020, according to data from online recruiting platform Handshake that was shared with NPR. Well, once again, one must truly ask why more young men 
are not going into the skilled trades, even though the skilled trades pay a very good wage. Researchers from Handshake tracked how the number of applications for technical jobs versus the number of jobs postings has changed over the last two years. Occupations such as auto technicians, just go ahead and say mechanics, with an aging workforce have the U.S. Chamber of Commerce warning of a quote-unquote massive shortage of skilled workers in 2023. Yep, this goes back to another video that I did called Society Will Suffer As More Men Are Bailing Out. Yes, yes, 7 million men are not even looking for work. Once again, incentives drive behavior. Quote, unquote, for a long time, our society has not talked favorably about the skilled trades. Quote, unquote, we've instead encouraged, excuse me, students to all go to college, all go to four-year institutions, graduate, and go out into white-collar jobs. However, that was a push from the boomers and the old Gen Xs. However, the fragile balance has been destroyed. Now, what do I mean by that? Yeah, you need some white-collar jobs, However, it's the blue collar jobs that are the true backbone to this country. And guess what? Not enough men are going to go into said jobs. Why? Because of the quote unquote technological advancements that we've had. Yeah, we don't need those jobs where more brawn is required. Now, let's go ahead and translate that with the war on masculinity. Oh yeah, gentlemen, this is all interconnected. See, these are things that those in charge didn't think about the long term. Oh yeah, keep pandering to women to keep them spending money. However, you're not gonna have places to spend money if you don't have a stable infrastructure. One path does not fit all. That is definitely true. Wanjalulu, who lives in Iowa City, Iowa, and is in his second year of a four-year carpentry apprenticeship, found school difficult. See that right there? Not everybody is meant to go to college, even though, even though, there was such a huge push for people to go to college, particularly men. However, you look at how anti-male college has definitely become. Yeah, yeah. He immigrated with his family to the United States from Benin, Africa, when he was a freshman. He goes on to say he's not the type of guy that likes being in the same spot all day, dealing with papers and stuff. So basically, he was born a man who likes working with his hands. Definitely, definitely nothing wrong with that. According to the Department of Education, about 45 million people in the United States owe nearly $1.3 trillion in student debt. Now we know who the overwhelming majority of said people are. That's right, women. Which is very ironic. Very, very ironic. But Wanjalulu, who makes nearly $24 an hour as a carpenter, said he still had trouble convincing his friends 
whom he keeps in touch with on Facebook and Snapchat to follow his path. You know why? Because unfortunately, the overwhelming majority of people have been thoroughly brainwashed into saying, yes, I need to get educated. I need to make a lot of money, which is another reason why you have so many men who are not going into the skilled trades. Oh, we're going to get into that. We're going to get into that. The narrative is shifting. Paul Iverson, a labor educator with the University of Iowa's Labor Center, hopes to change that. Um, Far too little, far too late. Iverson, who helps run a pre-apprenticeship program, said one of the reasons the participation in the skilled trades is low among Gen Z is because the work was typically passed down in families. Well, we know the destruction of the nuclear family is all but complete. Quote, unquote, it used to be word of mouth, said Iverson, but there's more of a need for carpenters, pipe fitters, plumbers, and electricians than you can fill with the family members of current people. There is plenty of need. Now, especially, there's an urgency to fill open posts, said Iverson, as the federal government funnels billions into projects to upgrade roads and transit systems across the country. Quote, unquote, we have to recruit people to do these things or else our bridges are going to fall apart, Iverson said. There you go, gentlemen. There you go. <laughs> oh, society is falling apart at the seams. Now, let's answer the question of why so many young men are not going into the skill trades. First and foremost, it's like Mr. Iverson said, society and women do not look favorably on blue collar men. Even though blue collar men tend to make pretty damn good money. For women, it's all about the projection of wealth. Mm -hmm. One of my buddies who I recently got back in contact with is a plumber. He is killing it right now, particularly going to calls involving women. Oh yeah. He told me about a particular job he had where a woman's toilet was messing up and all she had to do was lift up the lid and switch out the chain. However, she wouldn't do it. She didn't know how to do it. So a two minute job that she could have done by actually going to Walmart or Home Depot and getting the toilet chain and switching it out, he ended up making $250 on that job. Yeah, he literally sat around for 45 minutes and shot the shit. That is outright crazy. But, but we also live in an instant gratification culture, the microwave culture, if you will. We need things done now. And if I can't do it, I'll simply call someone to do it. What happens when you can't call anyone to actually fix things? Yeah, you're going to have to learn how to do it yourself. But that's something else that has not been passed down to the younger generation. A little bit of self-sufficiency. That woman should have been able to just go down to a hardware store, pick up a chain, and actually change it out herself. But no, 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 no. Hey, it is what it is. But yeah, like the young man in this article, he's making $24 an hour. Guess what? He is actually going to rake in the money, especially if he goes and starts his own construction business 
oh, he's going to kill it. However, unfortunately, there's just not enough incentive to get young men back into the trades. And yeah, something else. A lot of young men are saying, even if I do go into the trades, I know that I'm not going to be a valued member of society. I'm not going to be respected. Women are going to look down on me. So yeah, talk about a massive catch 22. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well. Guess what? Society keeps pandering to women to get them to spend money and keep society afloat, or should I say the retail section afloat? However, however, the fact that men have been cast to the side and society is crumbling, hey, you get what you get. Well, I've rambled on long enough. Read the full article. Let me know what you guys think. And women in America, believe you me, the power, the power that comes from the skilled tradesmen that actually keep the society afloat is going out. Ironically, feminism is going to go out right along with it. Why? Because the same feminists who want to talk about equity, inequality, for some odd reason, are avoiding jobs like this. But guess what? Those jobs require real work. Something that a lot of women tend to shy away from, which is why they continue to bitch about the all too mythical and actually destroyed narrative called the pay gap. It is what it is. That's all I got to say for this one. RPM, I am out.